Hello everyone, this is Professor Keen. Uh, I wanted to talk for a minute with you about the lab experiment that is due this coming Saturday evening. So that is Saturday, uh, March 28th at midnight. Uh, this is the canoe conundrum, and this is a laboratory experiment that you can do right at home. Um, I have in a student's guide to the great physics texts so right here, if you look, the canoe conundrum, I'll read it to you first and then I'll explain what I'm looking for you to do. So suppose that you are floating in a canoe in a small pool of water. You have a large rock in the boat with you. Okay, so let me just draw a picture. This is the canoe conundrum. This is exercise 15.3. I'll draw a picture to give you a sense of what I'm talking about here. So imagine you have a swimming pool and there is water in the swimming pool. So let's draw water right here like this. And then let's suppose you are floating in this canoe like this and you have a rock in your boat. So let's suppose the rock is right here. So this is the rock in the canoe and we'll put you in the canoe also. So this is you sitting in the canoe. Okay, so that's you. So this is the initial situation. You take a piece of chalk and put a mark at the level of the water on the hull of the canoe and another mark at the level of the water on the side of the pool. So let's go ahead and do that. So the water level on the canoe is right here. Okay, so you put a mark on the canoe there and you put a mark on the side of the pool right here that marks the level of the water on the canoe and on the side of the pool. Okay, now here's the next thing you do. You throw the rock from the canoe and it sinks down into the water. So you take this rock, you throw it out and it sinks down to the bottom of the pool. So now the rock is at the bottom of the pool. So this is step one is it's right there and step two is it's down at the bottom of the pool. Now here's the question. Does this surface of the water rise above or fall below the mark on the hull of the canoe and does it rise above or fall below the mark on the side of the pool? So does the water level Um, rise above or fall below, first of all, the mark on the canoe. So this thing right here, when you throw the rock out now, is that mark now um, higher or lower than the water. That is, does the water level fall below or rise above the level of that mark? And secondly, and this is maybe the harder question, does the water level rise above or fall below the mark on the side of the pool? Those are the two questions that you need to answer. Um, and there are really two ways to answer this question. Um, each of these questions and the first way I'd like you to do it is do it completely theoretically. See if you can reason through what would happen using reason alone. Okay, so you might want to think about this specifically in terms of Archimedes principle that might help you and as another hint you might think about doing this instead of one step from in the canoe to out here, do it in two steps. Take this rock and first set it, maybe I'll call this step 1A, set it on the side of the pool. So this is step 1A. And then step two, throwing it into the pool. So breaking it up into two parts might be easier. So set it up here and ask what happens to the water level there and there, and then kick the rock into the pool and see what happens to the water level there and there. So theoretically using reason alone, you must come up with a convincing explanation 
theoretically. So that's your answer part one. And answer part two is actually do it experimentally. Okay, so you could do this by, for example, taking a bucket of water instead of a pool. You could take a bucket of water and then put, this is just an idea, you can do it however you want, put water in this bucket and then take a um, take some kind of styrofoam cup or plate or something like that, maybe tear apart a styrofoam cup and float it in here and put up actual physical mark with a marker where the water level is there. You know, put a mark on the side of your makeshift canoe and another mark on the side of the bucket, okay? When you have a rock sitting inside of this, so put a nice heavy rock inside of it and put marks on the side of it there and there, and then take this rock out and let it sink to the bottom and see what happens to the water level there and there. There's a kind of a trick to doing this. Um, you might want to, first of all, use a heavy rock so it makes a difference. And secondly, you might want to use a styrofoam cup that's not too much smaller than the size of this bucket. If it's too small, the effect is going to be too small. So anyway, um, go ahead and, um, and try this experiment. I think at the end, I ask you, so how do you, what do you find? How do you explain your observations? And finally, would your answer change if you used a beach ball instead of a rock? So I want you to just think theoretically what would happen if you, instead of taking a rock, you're holding onto a beach ball instead and do this experiment. You're holding the beach ball and you throw the beach ball over here so it's floating on the top. Um, okay, so you need to do this and you need to write it up, uh, write up your experiment using your a lab book, some sheets of lab paper. Um, and then you'll need to scan these and upload these. So for the canoe conundrum, you can go to the MyWLC website for the course um, where you look at your grades for the course and you can click on the assignment canoe conundrum. So there's an assignment and you can do a file upload. Try to make a nice clean file that I can read. So file upload by Saturday night that has your um, lab experiment. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me, uh, uh, send me an email, and also join my office hours that are going to be on Wednesday and on Friday. Best wishes with the experiment, and uh, we'll be talking again soon.